our world was once a world dominated by dinosaurs. They walked where we walk. They drank the same water. Breathed the same air. And fought on the same battlefields. But then they faced a day that none of us can imagine. Some of the most critical hours in the history of life on Earth. This is the story of the day their world ended. The last day of the dinosaurs. Earth, 65 million years ago. A warmer place than it is today. Along the west coast of what's now North America, mountains tower over a lush, forested valley. It's the domain of the ultimate forms of prehistoric evolution. Dinosaurs. At more than 350 pounds, with a wingspan of 40 feet, Quetzalcoatlus is the largest flying creature of all time. A mile down, a breakfast no carnivore can resist. It will take this tiny hatchling 18 years to become the age's most fearsome predator. But for now, Tyrannosaurus rex is just a few inches tall, not very scary, and completely exposed. But not completely unprotected. The father, a fully grown T-Rex, is on the hunt. His acute sense of smell helps him sniff out prey from great distances, and it also serves him well as a parent. He knows when something is wrong. Quetzalcoatlus's metabolism demands that it eat regularly. Empowering this streamlined body means finding rich sources of protein, like a three-pound baby T-Rex. Quetzalcoatlus's huge wings are perfectly adapted for long-distance gliding. But its sheer size makes it hard to lift off when it's backed into a corner. It's lucky this time. Of the entire clutch of T-Rex eggs, only one chick survives. And if it grows up, it will grow to be 17 feet tall and weigh more than 7 tons. But surviving to adulthood, even for Tyrannosaurus rex, isn't written in stone. Because a storm is coming. Born of events that took place long before. This is the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, 200 million miles away. Billions of rocks all hurtling through space in the same direction, like traffic on a freeway. All except this one, which is moving diagonally on a completely different course. It's like a 40-mile-wide semi suddenly slicing across the highway. But this truck is going 22,000 miles an hour. The two 
asteroids shatter into millions of fragments. But this fragment, over six miles across, has a special destiny. It's a rock poised to change history because it's heading for the fifth largest planet in the solar system. The only planet known to harbor life. Planet Earth. Meanwhile, the planet's reptilian lords live completely unaware of what's heading their way. Triceratops are among the most widespread dinosaurs on the North American continent. They're herbivores, but that doesn't mean they're wallflowers. All Triceratops take their mating rights very seriously, and at up to six tons each, a face-off can be fatal. This time, intimidation does the trick. But there's another enemy waiting in the wings. He's not after mating rights. The Triceratops is fast and well-armored enough to stand a chance against T-Rex, but not against two of them. Hunting as a pair, one T-Rex could get behind the deadly horns and armored collar. enough meat here to feed them both for weeks, but they may not have the time to enjoy it. A quarter of a million miles up is the Earth's last hope of defense. The moon has saved the planet before. Its pockmarked surface bears the scars of countless collisions. This crater, known as Tycho, is more than 50 miles wide. Created by a rock only half the size of the one that's on its way. But the moon is rarely in the right place at the right time. Nothing can stop the asteroid now. This cosmic missile isn't as alien as it seems. Like the Earth itself, it's made up largely of rock and water. In the cold vacuum of space, the water freezes into a hard permafrost. But on the inside, there's a chemical cocktail composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Key ingredients for life. Asteroid fragments like this one may have provided the building blocks for life on Earth. Life that evolved into dinosaurs. But what gives life can also take it away. Most dinosaurs in the valley hunt and forage during the day and sleep at night. This giant herbivore, an ankylosaurus, keeps one eye open for predators. Under the cover of darkness, very different creatures emerge from their hiding places. Like Masadma, a primitive mammal about the size of a possum. Like most other mammals, Masadma's life is all about being where the dinosaurs aren't. It only comes out at night to forage for tasty roots and insects. While the giants sleep, it's the meek that witness a cosmic event, a meteor shower. Each streak of light is a tiny fragment of the asteroid collision, burning up as it enters the atmosphere. But these are mainly outriders of the much larger missile hurtling through space. An asteroid locked into a head-on collision. The day of reckoning is here. After a journey lasting a hundred million years, an enormous chunk of cosmic rock is approaching the end of the line. And the end of the line is Earth. 
In what is today central Mexico, a herd of Alamosaurus is wandering the plains in search of food. There are recent species to evolve, and even by dinosaur standards, they're huge. They're the last of the sauropods, the biggest animals ever to walk the earth. 70 feet long and a staggering 40 feet tall, Alamosaurus weigh up to 30 tons. To maintain that bulk, they need to eat up to a ton of leaves every day. A vast herd like this one strips the landscape of vegetation in just a few hours. Because she's a nomad on a constant search for food, when it's time for this female to lay her eggs, she doesn't nest. She simply lays eggs in groups of five or six to improve the chances that some will survive. Under normal conditions, only one in 3,000 will produce a mature Alamosaurus. But the odds stacked against these eggs are about to get astronomical. Because now, just 20 minutes away, two trillion tons of rock is racing right at them. The asteroid fragment's enormous mass is only part of the threat. The other part is velocity. But as it gets closer to the planet, the Earth's gravitational pull gets stronger, and the asteroid accelerates past 40 to 45,000 miles per hour. And mass times acceleration equals force. As the asteroid encounters atmosphere, friction turns it into a fireball. Swooping over the Atlantic and aimed at Mexico and the Alamosaurus. It takes just four minutes to cross the ocean. It crushes and superheats the air surrounding it, transforming gas and debris into white hot plasma. At 35,000 degrees, it's burning brighter than a million suns. just five seconds to flash through the atmosphere. Impact seems instantaneous. But hidden within the cataclysm are a series of discrete events invisible to the naked eye, but key to understanding what follows. The asteroid's trajectory is shallow. It flies in at about a 30 degree angle to the surface. This means the full brunt of its destructive power will be thrown to the north of the impact point. Even before the fireball touches down, its sheer brightness in the sky is unimaginable. Five hundred miles from ground zero, the light is so intense, it makes the Alamosaurus flesh seem transparent. And burns flash frames of their shadows onto the ground. The scorching light sears their eyeballs. They have no way of seeing what's headed their way, but they can feel it. An explosive force of a hundred million megatons, more powerful than all the nuclear weapons ever built. If the asteroid had crashed into deep ocean, some of the force would have been absorbed. Instead, it hits the shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico, which instantly vaporize. In a fraction of a second, the entire asteroid disintegrates into the planet. Earth and rock also vaporize and are hurled skyward at 100,000 miles an hour. Behind them, 80,000 cubic miles of the Earth's crust explode from the ground. 500 miles from the crash site, the air temperature now reaches 600 degrees. Hot enough to boil away the water in the dinosaur's skin, which escapes in sudden bursts of steam. The fiery blasts suck every drop of moisture from the vegetation. 
had he been directly exposed to the blistering heat, he simply broiled alive. Just 108 seconds after impact in the Gulf of Mexico, the bright streams of vaporized rock can be seen in the Pacific Northwest. From their clifftop roost, a breeding pair of Quetzalcoatlus can see the glow of the fireball high above the horizon, 3,000 miles away. That's how big it is. Just two minutes have passed since the asteroid slammed into the Earth. The body count back near the crash site is immense. Surprisingly, there are survivors. Those lucky enough to be shielded by a mountain are spared the worst of the light and heat blasts. But three more waves of destruction are coming. On impact, boulders the size of buildings blasted into the air at supersonic speeds. But what goes up must come down. Hundreds of surviving Alamosaurus are bombarded from above. A second wave hits from below. An earthquake measuring 11.1 on the Richter scale. Nearly 60 times more powerful than any earthquake humans have experienced. is the blast pulse wave, radiating outward in a perfect circle. Packing a force that rips through air faster than the speed of sound, stripping skin from flesh, flinging 30-ton dinosaurs into the air like so many rainbows. Just five minutes have passed since impact, and three waves of destruction have decimated an entire species. Many other species of dinosaur in the region share the Alamosaurus fate. Most of the eggs, too, have been destroyed. And yet the Earth is a powerful protector. Some eggs buried in the cool ground have survived. New Alamosaurus life is growing. There is still hope, for now. An immense boulder the size of Mount Everest crashes into the Gulf of Mexico, driving entire species of dinosaurs to extinction in less than five minutes. But the worst is still to come. On the other side of the planet, there's still no sign of trouble. Mongolia is 8,000 miles from the impact. The scrubland here supports hundreds of dinosaur species. For a family of Coronosaurus, it's business as usual at a favorite watering hole. They can weigh four tons and grow to 40 feet in length. But they're vegetarians and docile, except when they have to defend themselves or their offspring, which are now at their most vulnerable to the hungry predators that lurk around every corner. Armed with a razor-sharp, oversized claw on its hind feet, this is the jackal of the Cretaceous period. Sir Ornithoides, a very smart reptile, its brain-to-body weight ratio is among the highest of any dinosaur. It's hungry, but it knows better than to take on a full-grown Coronosaurus. Not when there are easier targets.
In its rush to eat, the thief doesn't get as far away from the enraged mother as it should. And it can smell its mistake. It's a Mexican standoff between two very different kinds of dinosaur. One has the speed and smarts of a carnivore. But the other is 80 times larger. But the large herbivores of this world aren't made for fighting. And that's exactly what the Sauronithoides is counting on. Especially when he's got backup. Speed and strategy give these small hunters the edge. Neither great size nor great intelligence is any guarantee of safety from the kind of enemy that is now approaching. On the other side of the planet, a fireball rises a hundred miles above ground zero. Seventy billion tons of pulverized stone and earth fill the upper atmosphere with a cloud of microscopic dust and glass. And it's spreading fast. This is the ejecta cloud. As the dust spreads at high altitude, trillions of tiny particles re-enter the atmosphere. The friction creates intense heat. A 15,000 degree dust cloud heating up everything beneath it. From their clifftop perch in the Pacific Northwest, the male and female Quetzalcoatlus have a clear view of the approaching cloud. Down in the valley, a thick ocean fog blocks out the sky. The heavy blanket of moisture makes it impossible to see the coming apocalypse. But the animals down here do get a warning. Not from above, but from below. When the asteroid struck, most of the energy is deflected out or up. Only 1% of the force travels down into the ground. But it's enough to ring the planet like a bell. Seismic waves radiate both across and through the Earth. 16 minutes and 40 seconds after impact, they reach the Pacific Northwest. The ground shakes as the 11.1 earthquake ripples through the ground. The triceratops panic up the side of the valley in a desperate attempt to escape the tremors and falling debris. Smaller animals take shelter underground. Meanwhile, the ejecta cloud is approaching at 10,000 miles per hour. It bakes the earth with unrelenting heat. Millions of volts of static electricity charge the cloud like a giant battery, creating a vast electrical storm. Superheated rocks shower the valley, a burning hail. The Quetzalcoatlus are fleeing the quake's devastation below, but there's no way to hide from a rain of fire. Only the valley floor can provide shelter, but they're too big to descend quickly. Those tattered wings can no longer keep them aloft. If his mate doesn't find shelter, she'll be next. On the mountain slopes, a pair of triceratops emerges above the cool sea mist. They're almost out of the quake-ravaged valley. When the ejecta cloud arrives, like a blowtorch. A 
a dinosaur paradise just hours ago. North America is now a living hell. But the ejecta ain't finished yet. Not by a long shot. Less than an hour since the asteroid impact. Hundreds of species of dinosaurs lie devastated across the Western Hemisphere. The ejecta cloud continues to spread at high altitude. As it spans the globe, the effects on the ground vary dramatically. 8,000 miles away in Asia, the cloud rolls in silently from the east. In Mongolia, temperatures on the ground tick upwards, a few degrees hotter every second. There's no audible warning, only mounting heat. As the air reaches 120 degrees, the only hope is shelter. At 160 degrees, survival is measured in minutes. Over 200 degrees, just seconds. 90 minutes after impact, the temperature on the ground in Mongolia peaks at 300 degrees. But not every dinosaur is baking alive. The microclimate of a cave can keep a handful of survivors cool enough to breathe. But it's a refuge that has to be shared, forcing an uneasy peace between sworn enemies, one that's already fraying at the edges. Back in the Pacific Northwest, the dense fog still shields the valley from the intense heat above. In sheltered areas like this, small pockets of dinosaurs hang on. For the Triceratops here, the high temperatures and humidity force them to keep moving. For scavengers, there's no shortage of food. Most animals caught by the ejecta cloud aren't so lucky. The female Quetzalcoatlus is one of the few survivors of her species. The last thing these animals need is a new threat. But the after effects of impact are just getting started. Above the valley and across North America, the intense heat of the ejecta cloud has ignited fires. Blazes so intense, they generate their own winds. Down in the valley, the air pressure plummets. Creating a vacuum that sucks in the flames. vegetation goes up like a powder keg, building a wall of fire. The front of the fire burns hottest and fastest. Moving across the valley floor at nine miles an hour. Rex can run twice that speed. But it can't keep the pace up forever. The Valley Basin is now a firestorm. 1,800 degrees. Hot enough to melt solid aluminum. The panicked animals race up the valley slopes, but fire goes faster uphill. Some lucky creatures escape below the flames. But large dinosaurs have no place to hide. Her wings still damaged from the falling ejecta, the wounded Quetzalcoatlus struggles to take off. For the 
dinosaurs. Time is running out. Two hours after the asteroid impact, the entire planet is covered in dust and smoke. Fires rage across the Western Hemisphere. One of the few remaining Quetzalcoatlus, a flying pterosaur as big as a giraffe, is struggling to get airborne. From above, what was once a lush valley is now an inferno. Animals that fly can escape the flames, but there are few places to land and almost nothing to eat. A food chain once rich enough to support giants now lacks its basic component, plants. Eight thousand miles away in Mongolia, the temperatures are finally dropping. A handful of animals remain safely holed up in their cave. It seems the worst is over. The ravenous Sir Ornithoidids can't resist the sight of an easy meal. Soon, the braver Coronosaurus follow, making their way back towards the watering hole. One stays near the protection of the cave. As the ejecta begins to clear, the parting clouds reveal the shift in temperature is throwing Earth's weather systems into turmoil. And in Mongolia, powerful winds are gathering billions of tons of dust and sand. A dust storm forms as hot air rises. Thermal imaging shows how it builds, whipping up loose particles of sand and dust and gaining energy from the heat of the sand itself. The 300 degree temperatures that baked Mongolia turn a common weather phenomenon into a superstorm. As it hits, the Saronothoidids are small enough to crouch for cover. But the Coronosaurus are out in the open. The sand blasts their bodies. The harder they struggle, and the deeper they gasp for oxygen, the more sand fills their lungs. Until finally, they can breathe. Superstorm engulfs much of the continent. It's hours before the winds die down. The last Coronosaurus, protected once again by the cave, heads to the watering hole on her own. Halfway there, she finds she's the last of the herd. But she's not the last remaining dinosaur in the neighborhood. <laughs> Puddled close to a Coronosaurus corpse, the Saronothoridids were sheltered from the worst of the storm. But the sand has swallowed their meal. Instinct drives them back to their prime hunting spot, the watering hole, where the last surviving Coronosaurus is taking in the much-needed fluid. She's lucky to be alive, but too exhausted to run from any new sign of danger. And danger has arrived. The Saronothoidids are desperate for food, but they're weak from hunger and the buffeting of the sandstorm. 
Only one has the confidence to attack. Its prey is still too exhausted to run. At this time, size does matter. The remaining Soren Authoides moves in. But it has no intention of making a run at the Coronasaurus. Not when fate offers it a meal that can't fight back. A week after impact, food is in very short supply across the entire planet. Life is hardest for the plant eaters. Huge herbivores have to eat vast amounts just to sustain their massive bulk. But there are simply no plants to be found. They can only hope that something, somewhere, is growing. The carnivores are more fortunate. They can eat the herbivores. But two triceratops are a little too much to take on. For now. Three days after the asteroid impact, a once blue planet is shrouded in darkness, and the landscape is anything but green. Fire, heat, and acid rain have battered the terrain until it's unrecognizable. Normally, Triceratops wouldn't travel more than a few miles a day. They wouldn't have to. But now, most of the continent is stripped of vegetation. Hunger drives the giant herbivores toward the Pacific coast. The devastation reaches all the way to the sea. But geography has a way of protecting certain places from cataclysmic events. In this case, an island, apparently untouched by the surrounding desolation. There may still be food here. The female Quetzalcoatlus has been flying for three days. She's weak and in desperate need of food. From a thousand feet up, the island comes into view. But all is not as peaceful as it seems. Deep below the surface, the ocean floor was shaken by the asteroid's initial impact. Sedimentary rock disintegrates under the strain and collapses hundreds of feet into the ocean floor. On the surface, the sea level plunges, triggering a massive swell. At the coast, the ocean is dragged back hundreds of feet from the land, exposing huge expanses of seabed. The path to the island is suddenly dry land. The forest ahead of them appears untouched by the hellstorm of the ejecta. It seems too good to be true. Half a mile from the coast, the three 
Triceratops finally reach the promised land. Sheltered from the ejecta by sea mist and protected from fires by the surrounding ocean, the island has all the food they need. The Quetzalcoatlus hasn't had a decent meal in days. army of mega tsunamis. The asteroid impact launches them against more than 13,000 miles of coast. Huge swaths of shoreline simply wash away into the sea. The avalanche of water leaves countless dead in its wake. But as devastating as the first wave of disasters is, there's more to come. following the asteroid's arrival, a series of plagues have been unleashed on the planet. Firestorms, earthquakes, sandstorms, and towering tsunamis. But these are only the outward signs of a catastrophe that reaches much deeper. Across the continents, thousands of dinosaurs may be walking but their species are already dead. Because to survive, any species needs to maintain a critical mass of population. Fall below that threshold, and there's no way to climb back from certain extinction. The final nail in the coffin may take a while to develop, but it's no less deadly and no less final. The coup de grace for the dinosaurs comes from inside the planet. Because when a rock six miles across slams into the Earth at 45,000 miles per hour, it shoots a million megatons of energy straight into the ground. Seismic shock waves ripple through the planet. The aftershocks continue for months as tectonic plates shear and tear. Deep inside the planet, they trigger molten rock to force its way to the surface through newly formed fractures. Until it explodes from the Earth's crust in violent volcanic eruptions. The seismic waves awaken dormant volcanoes around the world. to the debris clouds of dust and toxic gases that already surround the globe. The shroud is already many miles deep. A thick blanket, stopping light and warmth reaching the Earth's surface. The planet plunges further into a nuclear winter. In the days and weeks that follow, the only growth to thrive is fungus which lives off the rotting remains. Here in Mongolia, few signs of dinosaurs remain. And for the starving Coronosaurus, the future looks bleak. But it stays near the cave that has saved it twice in the past. The watering hole that once provided plenty. But the last
last Coronosaurus doesn't fall victim to starvation. Bubbling to the surface is one of nature's most toxic gases, hydrogen sulfide. Released from deep underground by volcanic activity, it collects invisibly in low-lying areas, like the waterhole's natural basin. The gas paralyzes the lungs, making escape impossible, then it kills by suffocation. What was once a refuge is transformed into a death trap. The last dinosaur in this part of Mongolia is dead. Mexico, too, is a graveyard. Just 500 miles from ground zero, it's been hit by wave after wave of devastation. There would seem to be little else that nature could throw at it. And yet, amidst all this destruction, beneath a thin layer of charred soil, a lone Alamosaurus egg survives. In the Pacific Northwest, just a handful of dinosaurs patrol the gray wasteland. An Ankylosaurus, severely weakened by hunger, searches the charred terrain for something to eat. 25 feet long and weighing four tons, this heavily armored herbivore is used to getting nearly 300 pounds of food every day. All it can find now is a small bush. And even that won't come without a fight. But hunger is the least of their worries. It's two of this world's best armored warriors versus a hungry carnivore that won't take no for an answer. disappearing, starving giants are forced to fight for every calorie, even to the death. So the dinosaurs that outlast the ejecta, firestorms, and poison gas ultimately fall victim to the demands of their own massive bodies. It took 160 million years to bring the dinosaurs to this point in their evolution. It took just one rock to bring them down. The events triggered by the impact flashed by at breakneck speed. Seismic shocks caused massive earthquakes. Boulder 
ships the size of buildings rain down, followed by a brutal blast wave, all within the first three minutes. By the time the superheated ejecta cloud hit Mongolia, just 44 minutes later, the whole planet was in shock. In the coming days, the forest fires raised the earth. Dust storms destroyed entire ecosystems. Titanic waves wrecked coastlines. Put all these together, and it's hard to believe that anything on Earth could have survived. But something has. Mexico, 500 miles from the point of impact. The very first landmass to feel the force of the asteroid strike. A region that has suffered wave upon wave of violence. Yet even here, even now, life remains. The last surviving Alamosaurus egg. Buried safe within the soil, a chick has survived the barrage of destruction. And he's not alone. All around the world, small handfuls of dinosaurs try to start over. But inbreeding and disease weaken their tiny populations. Eventually, the huge numbers of dinosaurs that had ruled the world are reduced to a single solitary dinosaur. And it too is gone. And with it, a dynasty that had ruled the Earth for 160 million years. But dinosaurs weren't the only animals on the planet. There were other humbler life forms that had lived in the dinosaur's shadow for a very long time. When floods and firestorms hit, they found shelter underground. Some hid deep inside trees and plants. Others took refuge beneath the soil. And small mammals like Masadma survived by scampering into burrows. Down here, they were protected from the worst the asteroid could throw at them. The Earth would be inherited by animals that were good at hiding. Fish were sheltered beneath the water. So were the aquatic reptiles. Birds, especially waterfowl, could survive by diving underwater or hiding in burrows. It would be years before all the sun's energy could reach the land again. But the heavy cloud slowly begins to clear. In the Gulf of Mexico, where the asteroid struck, a shallow crater can be seen. A tiny scar for such a fatal wound. Out of the ruins, nature starts over. Simple organisms like mold and fungus dominate the burned and rotting landscape. Then new growth emerges. And one plant in particular, ferns. Tough and resilient, they soon carpet the planet in green. It takes thousands of years for ferns to give way to forests breathing oxygen and life into the planet again and setting the stage for a new era. Because waiting in the wings are creatures whose development had long been thwarted by the dinosaurs, the mammals. Unlike the dinosaurs, the mammals are fast breeders, brilliant adapters. They multiply and diversify. 
10,000 species exploding across the planet. But it's millions of years before one very important species branches off from its relatives and comes down from the trees. They walk on two legs, have all bigger brains, and eventually rule the planet, just as the dinosaurs once did. But unlike them, they'll reshape the world, building cities that touch the sky, vehicles that can leave the planet, and weapons that can destroy it. But none of it could have been possible if a chance collision in space 165 million years ago had sent an asteroid hurtling toward Earth and doomed the dinosaurs to extinction. Only because they died, 